I'm Devaka Pereira, a cardiologist at Guy's at St. Thomas's Hospital in London, and with me is Mark Kern, who's the Director of Cardiology at Newark Beth Israel uh, Medical Centre. Mark, after four or five decades of use, we've now got RCT data on IABP therapy, and the data is a bit conflicting. How has this affected your practice, our practice, in 2015? Well, first and foremost, we're very respectful uh, of the results of any randomized clinical trials. Uh, but for the most part, the conclusions pertain to the routine application in a certain subgroup, not necessarily what I as a clinician in the trenches would do on a case-by-case -case basis in a patient who's in trouble or who's in distress. So, in fact, uh, I still turn to that very easy-to-deploy uh, device that allows me to support uh, my patient uh, on a case-by-case -case basis. Now, uh, there has been an evolution in balloon pump therapy with a larger volume mm -hmm. uh, device being introduced, the Mega 50 device. Right. Um, has that, uh, have you found that it, there's a difference in, in therapy yeah. with the Mega 50? It, I have been very impressed uh, by the dramatic augmentation uh, of the 50cc balloon and uh, by augmentation uh, you can slice that in two ways, the diastolic augmentation as well as the reduction in uh, systolic pressure. So. Uh, both augmenting diastolic perfusion as well as reducing afterload, the degree to which the 50cc balloon does this compared to our old uh, uh, workhorse, the 40cc balloon, I think is a dramatic step in the right direction. Uh, and I would like to be able to trace that back to some of the recent uh, clinical work uh, that has already been published by Dr. Kapoor and the work we presented earlier today, this afternoon uh, at EuroPCR in, in uh, 150 patients. And is there a cost to pay for that greater efficacy in terms of a, high, a greater sheet size, for example? The sheath size uh, is a little bigger uh, for the 50, but in terms of bleeding complications, in terms of any vascular complications, these are relatively few uh, and far between. Uh, and now with our tricks in terms of peripheral vascular, pre-closing, not pre-closing, doing contralateral things right. to ameliorate bleeding, uh, it, it becomes a relatively low uh, anxiety situation to quickly be able to deploy a 50cc balloon. Right. If I can take you back to your initial comment, you yeah. said you, you decide on balloon pump use on a case-by-case -case basis. Could you tell us how you might select your patients in a high-risk PCI setting? Your patient's yeah. not in shock, yeah. but they're about to undergo a high-risk PCI. Which so ones? we have several choices, and depending on the case, uh, we could either look at the coronary anatomy and decide that uh, maybe we could just sneak by without any artificial support, yeah. and sometimes you know, keep it simple is the right way to go. Uh, other times, uh, we want to s make sure that the support is there uh, as we get ready to cross that line and deploy a stent in a distal left main involving a bifurcation. Uh, other times, uh, we would consider whether or not we should go to a more extreme uh, situation uh, with an impella device. I have found that the middle of the road approach based on the ease of use, ease of deployment, ease of removal uh, with much less wear and tear on the vascular uh, system, uh, the 50cc balloon helps us uh, keep a very calm uh, situation in the room with high risk PCI. Right. And in terms of anatomical features, are you making an assessment of likely ischemic time and complexity of PCI? Well, the most important question that I ask myself is what would happen if that particular lesion dissects or if that particular vessel occludes or uh, if something you know, terrible happens with regard to the stent that right. it dislodges or something at that location. Right. And then I would try to imagine in my mind what the impact is on the patient. What I would 
you know, share with the audience is just coming into the cath lab with a normal left ventricle doesn't mean you necessarily can get away with murder. Uh, yes, so it's a combination of all of those. Right. The, the ventricular right. function, likelihood of there being a problem, as well as the consequences of that problem if it were to happen. Right, and the consequences oftentimes, if they occur, occur almost immediately. Right. Uh, which brings me to another point. You didn't, uh, we didn't ask a question about it, but I, I'm a firm believer in prophylaxis as to waiting for something bad to happen and then scurrying around and trying to deploy counterpulsation. And that practice is, is borne out by registries and trials. Whenever we've compared bailout uh, IABP use to elective IABP use, those patients are all, always do much worse. Yes. Don't they? So in my heart, I agree with you completely, Devaka, that the approach, if, if you're thinking that you may endanger the patient's life or sustain significant morbidity, go ahead and have a prospective attitude towards deployment as opposed to just wait and see. Okay, so if I may summarize our, our, our thoughts for the audience. Um, the trial data tells us that a policy of routine placement in all patients who fit a diagnostic category is probably not uh, a good idea, but we need to make a patient by patient Correct. decision on whether they need it and if we decide that this is a patient who may need a balloon pump sometime during the PCI procedure, use it up front rather than uh, when your, your back's to the wall and, and every, all hell's breaking loose. And from your own experience, you found that the 50cc is now a, a device which offers potentially more hemodynamic support than the 40cc, so that's something to, to consider as well. Mark, thank you very much.